just have a cup of coffee, then I'll go. Welcome back to Coffee Time. It's not a prop. So there's been a consistent theme for a month or so on comments about the videos. And so I'm gonna to try to clear them up on this coffee time. And I think I'm gonna do a follow-up video uh, later today or tomorrow on uh, expand on the topic. But I'm up to over 270 videos over the last couple years. And through the course of those videos, I've pretty much covered, I've explained everything about my life, how I got here, decisions I've made, why, um, as uncomfortable as it was, I did some rather personal things about my life and my history. Based on comments, um, it's naive of me to think or rather silly of me, maybe not naive, that just because I made one or two or three videos on a particular topic or viewpoint or aspect doesn't mean everybody saw those videos and that it's not realistic to expect everybody's going to go back and watch every video. First and foremost, have another sip. Oh, it's hot. I need to remind everyone that the videos I do are my opinions based on my experiences. So you can't really send me a message and say, oh, you're wrong because of such and such. You, know, you can't, uh, my experience is my experience. Other people can have very different experiences. It doesn't mean that it's theirs is wrong. There's no right or wrong here. It's 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 what your view on what you experienced on any given day. And, but my videos are not travel videos promoting anything. I'm not saying, oh, you've got to go to Medellin, or yes, it is pronounced Medellin, not Medellin, if you're in Colombia, or Cali, or Bogota, or I'm not promoting. Sometimes something will impress me to the point where I'm going to, hey, you're not going to believe this. This is awesome. But I'm, I'm not here uh, getting paid to promote any particular place. Whether you go to a place or visit, or it's your life. It has nothing to do with me. I'm just telling you what my life experience is in these places. Now, if you can apply that to your own personal characteristics and personality and likes and dislikes, then great. I hope you pull something out of it. And I try to give as much good information as possible, but um, you really have to get over the notion that what I say is gospel and it's a matter of facts. It's really just my opinion. So, if you really want to know what's right for you, get out and explore. It's really that simple. On these messages, sometimes what I get, and it's probably the most uh, discouraging thing, is people get so invested in a decision that they make that beyond any kind of logic, reason, they'll defend that decision. So, if you decided to move to Cuenca, and I say something about the graffiti in Cuenca, and you get upset about that, then obviously you're not looking around because there's a serious graffiti problem and the mayor of Cuenca has acknowledged as much and they're trying to do something about it. And businesses are very frustrated with the fact that they try to have a good looking uh, business and they come out the next morning, it's all graffitied up. And I don't mean the artwork graffiti, I mean, you know, the ugliness graffiti. So it's there, it's real, everybody pretty much knows it, but if I mention graffiti, you have some people that 
are so invested in their decision to be in Cuenca, they don't want to hear, la, 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 la. <laughs> they don't want to hear anything that comes across to them as something negative, which is really a, a ridiculous way to live your life, but it's your life, you can live it how you want. Just don't send me the messages on it. You know, don't, don't send me a message complaining about something that we all know is real. So, try to remember these videos are not standalone videos, that they're really a sequence of decisions I make and where I'm going to go and how I got there. And it, to really understand it, you need to see a lot more than just the video of the day. Um, I don't have them encapsulated like that. I know some people do. It's just it's not the way. It's not. It's just not the way I do things because my life doesn't work that way. My life isn't these little sanitized sections. You, you know what affected me three months ago may come up tomorrow. So that's how my videos are. So to understand them, you really kind of need to go back. It's still too hot. So if it seems like there's a gap in the video, if there's something that you scratch your head and go, I don't get that, I'm missing something here, it's probably because whatever that is missing was maybe a few videos ago. So, you know, please consider that, understand that. Another thing I want to point out is my videos, unless I specifically say so, they're not comparisons. I'm not comparing this place to that place, unless I specifically say, well, I'm here and it's this way in Bogota, but it was that way in Cali. But otherwise, I'm thinking about a place as it is, as I'm dealing with it right then and there. I'm not sitting there and saying, well, this is exactly the way it is in the United States, or this is completely different, because you'd be surprised how many uh, comments I get where I'll mention something and somebody takes a burn because they just don't want to believe it or nine times out of ten it's somebody who's never been to the location I'm at but they'll say but it's much worse in the United States you know especially if I ever talk about uh, crime or danger well it's much worse in the United States and, and that's just it's just a ridiculous comment because first of all I'm not comparing to the United States or Canada or England or France or the Philippines I'm talking about where I am relative to itself but to say something like that it's like am I comparing Compton to Cuenca? How about Cape Cod to Gualaseo? I mean Cape Cod is much, much nicer, isn't it? Have you, have you ever been there? Place is awesome. Compton, maybe not so much. How about if I compare Disney World to the Tranvia? I mean, come on, it, it, it's, it's not much worse than the United States. I mean, if you want to hate the United States, hate the United States. Just don't drag my videos into it. I'm not comparing to the United States, unless I specifically say, XYZ is like ABC. Um, so you know, please kind of get that out of your mind. All right, you may have noticed I have a really bad haircut and you can particularly see it over here. I have these long stringy things. It's, it's a terrible haircut. And I was warned, I was down at the gym that I, I joined a, a gym and I decided I was gonna get a haircut. And right above the gym, out on the street, there's a place that cuts hair. So I said, oh, I'm going to go there. And he, oh, you don't want to go there. They give terrible haircuts. And I, that doesn't really matter. It's like not going in GQ magazine. So, so I was warned by several people, eh, you don't want to go there. So I go up and I, I, I told them that I just want a, a little trim, just a little bit. And they repeated back to me and used the hand gesture and the Spanish word. and So we're on the same page. Awesome. Cute girl, by the way. Tall blonde. Anyway, 
she gets her clip. She asked me scissors and clippers, and I, I don't care. A mixture of both is fine. I don't care. So she gets the clippers and ah, military style right at the back. Well, at that point, I mean, it's all over because now you got to even up the rest of the head to it. So, um, yeah, I guess I'm back in the Marine Corps. That haircut cost me about $2.70. And haircuts, that's probably about as cheap as they come. Uh, maybe down to $2 somewhere. They go up to about a, around $8 from what I understand. Um, it's just word of mouth. And I also understand it's typically 4 to $6 for a decent haircut. So, you know, I guess I got what I paid for, but I went in with both eyes open and uh, did happen to meet a very nice looking blonde girl. You know, the problem was, I told her, I said, how do you want your hair cut? And I said, well, I'll tell you what, cut my hair like I was your boyfriend. You know, that's, how's that going to be, right? Of course, after she does this haircut, she proceeds to tell me how they had a terrible breakup. Oh, uh, okay. Bad joke, sorry. Okay, I was asked about uh, in the last handful of videos, like when I went to Bogota, why didn't I put pricing down? Why didn't I I list this and that? I went to have a meal, and but I didn't show what I actually ate, and I didn't have the prices of this. And he was completely right. It was 100% true. On the other hand, you have to understand where I'm coming from. Uh, and that one I will flesh out more in the video that I cannot do until after October 8th. I will share some good stuff with you then. But when I'm out traveling around for something that's not just for fun, that I have to accomplish something, and I have a limited amount of time, and I'm not dragging a bunch of luggage, I'm not taking camera gear. I'm traveling alone. I don't have anybody to help me. I have my phone in my pocket generally. And... Depending on the bus, it may or may not have a functioning charger. And so I can have battery issues, I can lose information, I can uh, run into a situation where it's really not appropriate to take videos of something or people, or sometimes I'm told that I need to put it away. Um, when I was at the embassy, I got yelled at for for what they thought was taking pictures around the embassy, because apparently that's that's a real big no-no, which makes sense. Uh, but, so, you know, I run into all of these kinds of things, time crunches, battery is a big problem. And sometimes I'll have something going on, the battery will go dead and I'll actually lose what it was. It corrupts it or I don't know what. And so I try to gather as much information as possible, but my videos are not, specifically reviews. I don't go through a hotel room, for example, and say this is this and this and this. I'm not doing a formal review. When I'm showing what I'm eating for lunch, I'm showing how my life is going, what this trip is like, and I'm not so concerned about I need to make sure I know exactly what the price is. Now if I happen to know, often I don't know until I'm, I'm ready to pay uh, when you're traveling can be like that, but you're confident in knowing that it's never really going to be more than four or five dollars, so it's not like it's a, a big deal. Those things are incidental to me for what I'm going through, and I'm always worried about I need to save my battery, so it's to me, it's not that important. Now, it may be important to you, and I understand that. But keep in mind that I often do videos that talk about pricing. So it's not like because it's not in that particular video, uh, you're not going to know about it. You watch the videos, you're going to see. And as a matter of fact, that, that one dinner on the bus stop was 12,000 pesos, including the drink and the bottle of water I got. And the one I had in Kali a few videos back, four or five videos back, price was exactly the same. And so it doesn't vary much. Your lunches here are going to run about $2.50 to $5. And that'll pretty much include soup and a hefty portion of meat and a good-sized salad. Those are the pluses. 
Now you want to compare. In Cuenca, you get almost no meat and you get no vegetables. You just get a big pile of rice and a little bit of meat. Uh, you usually get a soup. Here you get a soup. So the soups are similar. Where Cuenca has an advantage, though, is they very often will have some sort of natural juice that's really good. And here it's hit and miss. If you want a natural juice, if they have it, you have to pay extra for it, which won't be a lot. It might be as much as a dollar. But what comes with it very often is just agua panela. It's, it's basically, it's a kind of a sugared water with lime and it's, yeah, it's kind of like Kool-Aid, I, I guess. Um, only not with white sugar. So there's good and bad, plus and minus, price is similar. Um, I love the fact that they give a lot of vegetables and more than a tablespoonful of meat. So if you order something with chicken, you get the thigh and the leg, you get the whole quarter of the chicken, you don't just get a little tiny piece of it. So here, when I eat lunches, I, I never eat the rice and I usually can't finish it. In Cuenca, I never ate the rice, but I could generally finish it. So I think you get more for your money, you know, if we're going to compare. Um, the food is certainly considerably better um, for a number of reasons. Here comes the hate mail from Cuenca. But I love you guys. So again, keep in mind, I travel alone. That makes a difference. And I don't take a lot of equipment. I mean, I don't have the money to replace the stuff. And so if I break it, if I drop it, if it's stolen, I'm stuck. I got a problem. So uh, I just take the minimum. And a lot of my videos, um, not this type, but when I'm out and around, I'm done on my phone, spur of the moment. So when I'm doing them, I do the best with my situation. I have to admit, when I was going to Bogota, almost everything that I took was an afterthought because there was so much on my mind. Again, October 8th, I'll tell you all about it. Um, I was just very concerned, uh, very stressed out, and I'm surprised I had as much video information as I did. I'm, I'm glad I did. But Now, I mentioned I started a gym. And on my part two of this, or the next video, I'm going to go recap my life and how I made a decision and how I went to Cuenca and why I didn't come to Colombia and why I'm now in Colombia. I'll go through all of that uh, because I keep getting asked. You know, if you go back and watch a whole bunch of videos, you'll figure it out. But uh, I'll do, I'll do a, a catch-up video here. Uh, probably be up tomorrow. So I'll get, you, I'll get you that refresher video. But I joined the gym just to touch on it because um, after I was sick for three years and two and a half years in bed and I got so fat and I lost all my muscle and I, I literally, when I got to uh, Quito and then came to Cuenca, I couldn't walk more than 15, 20 feet. Actually, literally. I'm using the word literally in a literal sense. If I walked 10 or 15 feet, I was just exhausted. I'd have to sit down or lean up against a building. It was terrible. Not only was I huge, I was up to about, as I recall, about 340 pounds. And I'm five foot 10. So, um, you know, I was like the, the Pillsbury Doughboy, ate nothing but cake all day. You know, I was huge. And during that time in bed, I don't know if anybody spent a lot of time in bed, but, um, you lose your muscle tone. Um, you know, I had to, I couldn't walk at all. I had to crawl to the bathroom, crawl and sit on the shower floor for a shower. It was, it was pathetic. It was, it was nasty. So, um, so I was in terrible shape and, you know, plus I didn't give myself time to recover before I came. So, and then you add to that the altitude. So I had a combination of things. I was just a mess. And I had a doctor in Cuenca that was aware of everything, and I would see him now and then and take advice from him. And he advised me that for a long time, don't do anything except walk. He said, don't push it, don't walk too much. Well, I didn't, I, I tend to push things, and I 
didn't pay a lot of attention to them. I kept pulling muscles in my leg and then I would be incapacitated for two, three, four days and in a lot of pain and then I'd go out and I'd do it again and do it again and for the first six, seven, eight months I was constantly in pain because I was walking more than I should. But then one day I was in the Zogies and just decided to walk and I ended up walking for about three hours up and down the hills in the Zogies and it felt good and I certainly turned a corner and doctor was very happy about that and that I wasn't pulling any more muscles and just keep walking, just keep walking. So that went on for a couple years. Well, just before I came here to Columbia, three or four months before, I had to see him on the breathing issue, the altitude, the pneumonia I had. I saw him a bunch of times and had conversations. And he told me that I was about to the point where I could start doing other kinds of exercises other than just walking. So being as busy as I was and dealing with all the things I was, you know, for the move, once I, all that got taken care of, there was nothing more that I could do as far as uh, my documentation. I then joined a gym and it's just a couple blocks away, which is nice because um, the easier it is, the more you want to keep up with it. So I go there and I ride their bike for about 20 minutes to, you know, get your heart beat going and then the rest of the time I go around and do their weight machines and you know try to get some muscle tone back and what's really surprising to me is I've only been eight times now so it's all obviously recently it's every day but uh, Sunday uh, so I've been eight times and I actually feel things coming back so it's coming back much faster than I expected so uh, so that's all good, that's positive, but that's why I joined the gym, uh, because I need specific things to build back my upper body. I'll get this next video done here probably this afternoon if it's not too noisy out, a lot of sports going on. And I'll try to get you caught up, give you a refresher on how I got here. You know, my life, what led me up to this point and decisions, why I didn't come to Columbia first all of that and then we'll get back on to the list of videos I've already done let's see I've already done Bogota Cray 23 taxi from bottom to top and I've got left to do Pareda and the visa process I've got the surprise reveal uh, after October 8th uh, why do I love Colombia and I think that's it. So, I've got half of, uh, about half of the videos done that, uh, that I set out to do so far for this season six. Please keep the comments coming. If it sounds a little negative, um, it's because some of the comments I get are negative, but I, I still want to address them if they're realistic, if they're coming from a legitimate place. And those comments uh, that I, hinted at today that I answered without reading the comments. Um, I, I felt they were all legitimate. You know, I, I understood where they were coming from, and so um, I wasn't going to blow it off like I will with just the rude, foul comments. These weren't like that. I think it had more to do with understanding or misunderstanding, and so I just wanted to clear that up. So. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Please keep the comments coming. And don't forget, I've got a GoFundMe page. I've got a Patreon account. So if you're so inclined, feel free to support uh, this channel. You'll find that information in the comments section below. I appreciate all the likes I've been getting. Um, again, uh, YouTube has taken that out of the mixture because of the, the turkeys that were trying to stack the deck, but still it's nice to, you know, get some feedback on, on what's going on. And of course, if you hadn't subscribed, please do subscribe. Um, from what I can tell, uh, probably 10 or 15% of the people that watch these videos actually subscribe and the rest don't. So please do, uh, because if you don't, 
videos go by and you're not aware of it and then I get comments from you about why didn't you such and such and such well I did well I didn't know that video came out so you want to subscribe and hit the notification and you'll always know so thank you for hanging in there with me I appreciate it a lot of you have been around for the last few years and uh, thank you very much see you next time